Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the 19th in a series of video tutorials for Unity 5. So if you remember last episode, we created this scene, well we completed this scene I should say, with our title menu. And if you remember as well, we created two of these, play game and quick game. So the quick game doesn't actually work as well as intended because it's still running within the Unity engine. So if we head to our area 01, and hopefully when we press play, oh, it's still thinking. If you ever press play by chance and things look black and the, the color doesn't quite look right, it is quite possibly because um, the engine is still rendering, it's still baking, it's to do with the light. So this episode we're going to be looking at various settings within Unity. Uh, we're going to be looking at building as well and possibly a couple of other settings within Unity too. So first of all, um, I'm just going to turn my sound off for now because I don't want it blasting out. Uh, go to edit, go to project settings and let's go to player. So over here you'll notice a few different settings. Company name, product name, purple icon, cursor, whatever. Now all these here are, well when you first start your um, project up, all these will be default. Your product name will be um, whatever you've called your Unity project. In my case was JV5. Just It meant nothing. So when you actually build your project up and create the executable, these will be displayed. You've got no icon, no uh, splash image, no nothing like that. So we can change that now and we'll see the, see the importance of it later on in this tutorial when we build our game. So company name, I'm going to put JB Game Studios. Product name, whatever your game is called, call it that. I'm just going to call it Jimmy's Adventure. Default icon, so this will be the icon of your executable. Now. For now, I'm going to use the same image as the thumbnail for this series. So I'm just going to import this. Now, if you want to use this image, by all means, it, it's up to you. Obviously, I don't. If you're making a real game, don't use this image. This is only just to kind of show you how it works. So you can either click on select and then find it. So I'm going to type in build image. Well, build. And it will appear there, so you can see that. Or, same as always, drag and drop. Uh, default cursor, I'm going to leave. Uh, in fact, I won't even touch anything to do with cursor, because we don't want the mouse to change. Uh, let's click on splash image, and let's use the exact same image. So, build, and use that one. Uh, I don't think we really need to touch many of the other settings. These are all kind of um, a bit more detailed. It, it, it's advanced, I would say. It's Don't worry about them for now. I think they're the most important ones that you could do with changing. So we don't want to uh, bother with these resolution and presentation settings unless you really want to. We don't really want a resizable window. You might want to. When you build your game, you've got two different options, you need to have full screen or windowed. If it's full screen, this option doesn't come into play. If it is windowed, you can change the size there. But we'll get around to that in a second. Uh, let's close that down, and we don't need to worry about the others. So, let's build our game. Let's go to File, and Build Settings. And if you remember, this is where we added in our scene for the title screen and this main area. So whichever is scene zero will always be the first scene to be rendered and will appear first within your build. After that, you can then change where you want to go. So in our case, our title screen, which is zero, we have a button which allows us to get to area zero one. So make sure everything down here is set correctly. We don't need to add current because both our scenes are in there. Our target platform, well, I'm working on Windows, but you can, if you're on Mac or Linux, change it there. Architecture x86, that's fine. Development build, is it development build? Uh, I'm not going to click that 
you can if you want to. Yeah, script debugging, don't worry about that. Make sure it is on this one. As I say, you need a little Unity icon next to the standalone package. Unless otherwise you want to de uh, develop for the web, which I wouldn't recommend. Uh, iOS, Android, whatever else. So let's click on build and run. It'll prompt you to save a file name. I'm going to call this just simply test. And then save. And now it will compile everything you created so far. If you remember, we removed the speed tree asset from our game. The reason we did that, we will see here. It actually freezes this building system if you have that speed tree in there. Creates a problem. I'm not sure what it is. I think it's a bug within Unity, but it's not a big deal for us at the moment. It'll take a couple of seconds to uh, build the whole thing together. I mean, reasonably, it shouldn't take that long. We've only got a small scene, realistically, and a title screen, so it shouldn't take massive amounts of time. If you've got a massively huge game, it will take longer. The more scenes you have, the longer it will take. So you can see it's building assets for scene zero at the moment. It, it, it generally does tell you what's going on here. Just take a couple of minutes to build it all together. Um, once we get into it, uh, we'll, we'll quickly go through a few things and then we'll, we'll see how we're doing for time and then we'll hopefully uh, possibly move on to something else. But after this tutorial, things start getting a little bit more advanced because we've got to a stage now where we can happily build um, a scene in Unity. If uh, the video cuts, don't worry, it's just because this is taking too long and I'm rambling on. Okay, so that took a little longer than I expected. Um, just a couple of minutes to do it. And as you can see down here in the bottom, it has created our game. Now, you'll notice the icon here is actually our little thumbnail image. And the splash screen here, as it's not quite fit properly, but uh, for all intents and purposes, you can adjust your image accordingly to fit there. I'm not going to um, mess around too much with that. It's just to prove that you can have your image right there. So as I said earlier, you can have either windowed or not windowed, which then affects the resizable uh, aspect of it. Um, you can have your graphic quality. I, I always recommend fantastic. Uh, screen resolution, set whatever resolution you have. Uh, monitor if you've got two, three monitors, you select which one. Okay, so for this one, I am going to select 1280 by 600, but I'm going to have it windowed. So this is now your executable game. And as I explained, your very first scene to load will be your scene zero. In this case, it is our title screen. And as you can see, everything looks just as it should be, just as we built it in our game. The music is playing, which is great. And now we can go to play game. And if you remember something I said, um, possibly last tutorial, um, when you do that in the um, actual engine itself, the lighting doesn't work properly in the area you end up in. And I did say it would be fixed once we get to um, this build, and it is. So everything should work as normal. You shouldn't have a problem at all. Everything looks just fine. So theoretically, we should be able to go over here to our guy and we shouldn't have any problems anywhere yeah that's all fine so that is how you put together your build so i'm going to close this down now and hopefully uh, if we go back here once you build the game the first time the second time you build it it should be Pretty quick I don't think you should have any problems so let's click build and run again just to check that so I'm going to resave it and it'll do everything it needs to do again um, hopefully it shouldn't take too long again if it cuts it's because it's taken too long but it shouldn't take too long this time so it still does everything it needs to do compile everything together build everything it needs um, that's the beauty of a standalone when it comes to unity it just puts together everything it needs anyway. 
you don't really need to add anything to it. So as I say, that was pretty quick that time, quite happy with that. So let's click play again and let's quickly use the uh, quick button. So remember, play game. Quick game doesn't work in the engine because you, you're not quitting the application. So quick game closes it all down. And that's exactly what we want it to do. Okay, so realistically, we've come to the end of our first, um, let's say, segment of game development. We've got to a point where we can build up an actual physical game now. We've got a couple of things in there and various different mechanics. From next episode onwards, we're going to be looking at a couple more advanced features. For example, uh, let's go to Jimmy's campsite and let's go to building 001. The textures, for example, look rather flat. They don't really stand out. They don't reflect much as you would expect them to, especially this building here. So we're going to start looking at making our textures and objects look a little more realistic and a little more uh, up to date rather than uh, these flat kind of 2000 textures. So they do look like something from PlayStation 2 era. So we can change all that and make it look much better. We can play with lighting, we can do various different things. Uh, we're going to start looking at, for example, fade screens. We're going to look at um, starting an actual physical quest for the game, so the game has a story. Um, if, for example, you've seen our recent uh, game of Deep Within, um, we'll be using a lot of methods we've used in that game in these tutorials now. Um, so, yeah, that's the end of this tutorial. Be prepared for the next one. We're starting to go advanced. Well, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.